Jeez. Today, guys, we are going to start the rebuild on that used X-Max that I got. Now, this is an X-Max 6S. That means it will not run off an eight cell LiPo battery. Originally, I thought I was gonna just do a complete rebuild and hop up, like put in all really, really cool upgraded parts. However, I think what I wanna do on this one, actually, I don't think, I know what I wanna do on this one, is I wanna just rebuild it all the way back to spec where it looks brand new stock and functions perfectly fine. But through this journey, I'm gonna go over everything I do to do the actual rebuild. And then also, I'm gonna point out some of the things that. I look at whenever I buy used vehicles. So the first thing that I look at when I buy used vehicle is the body. It's the first thing you see. And the reason why I look at that first is because typically bodies are actually pretty pricey. They can range anywhere between 40 and 150 dollars like they can go really really high this body i believe runs for about a hundred dollars brand new so the reason why i look at the body first is because if the body's completely destroyed which this one is pretty freaking bad typically you could just tack on an extra hundred bucks on the cost that you're paying for the car so it's gonna really dip into your savings if the body's destroyed now this body it's like the guy decided to wire up a whole bunch of custom lights and by doing that he poked a whole bunch of holes in the front and rear instead of trying to get these lights to work as cool as they might be yeah I, i'm not even gonna try to get them to work i'm just gonna take them out it looks like the screw holes that hold the actual cage in the holes are kind of pulled through uh, that's okay because traxxas actually makes these essentially body reinforces that you can put on those and the body will work just fine now the body's actually not that beat up other than these holes and the screw holes being stripped out so i don't know we'll revisit this maybe we'll just i don't know maybe we'll just cut cut the uh, wires out and then run it how it is. I don't know, I kind of want to do a different color body anyways. The next thing I look at after I remove the body are the screws. If the screws look mega rusty, typically that means they ran it in the water. That's kind of a telltale sign that it's had a rough life. Uh, this one does have plenty of rusted screws. I couldn't be picky. I got this one for a really good deal. And I wanted to try some new methods to get the rust out of the screws. And we'll try it here on the vlog. The next thing I'll check are the tires. So tires are also pretty pricey, especially on the X-Max. Some of the aftermarket X-Max tires can go for as high as actual car tires, like $100 a piece. The Pro-Line B-Lock ones, they're amazing, but they're super pricey. In this case, to replace tires, I'm probably looking at anywhere between $100 150 dollars maybe even north of that so i always check tires especially when i know that getting new ones is going to be really expensive how you can check them is check to see if the glue is coming off of them something is weird here man this thing way worse than i thought yeah the first thing you want to do is check to see if the glue is coming off of them then see if there's any rips and then squeeze them squeeze them like this and if you hear a lot of water inside huge red flag as soon as water gets in there it pretty much destroys the foam. The water will likely never come out, at least for a long time, and your balance will be off. So whenever you're driving, the car will shake a lot. The water will move around. It's just a complete nightmare. Man, these tires really don't look bad at all, which makes sense because it's only 6S. Like 6S doesn't really have that much power or enough power to really just blow the tires off. I'll also check the bottom of the car just to see how beat up it is. My God, look at all the rust on the bottom of this thing. Yeah, this thing, uh, the drive shafts are all rusted. Uh, we have, I have some tricks up my sleeve to take care of all the rust, but this one's gonna need a lot of work for sure. Even the springs have rust on them, jeez. All right, I'm gonna test to see if the electronics work. We're gonna fire it up for the first time. If you just bought an RC car and you wanna test the power system, I highly recommend you remove the tires first. You do not want this thing to go run away. And the worst thing that could happen is that it goes flying off your pit table and running into something, running into a person, in this case, this is a big vehicle. I definitely don't want it running off the back of the tailgate. So I took the wheels and tires off. So if it does power on and try to run away, it can't go anywhere. By the way, if you're new to the channel, my name is Mark Santa Maria. If you're not new to the channel, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the RC vlog. Man, guys, this rebuild is going to be so much fun. All right, guys, let's hope this works. When testing stuff, I like to, not that this will run away, but I like to leave the batteries kind of hanging out. Don't put them in the actual battery tray that way if it does run away you can just grab the battery and it'll pull the battery out but this one won't run away because it doesn't have any tires on it nice everything works perfectly fine now with that said it looks like there's like sand or dirt or something inside the ESC but we're not gonna worry about that but everything works very nice. All right. 
Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up in three pieces. I'm going to take the front clip off, the rear clip off, and then just have the chassis out. The reason why I'm doing that is because the X-Max is big, and I want to be able to work on it on my workbench. All right, I have three Solo Cups here labeled front, chassis, and rear. There's a reason why I'm using Solo Cups. Part of the de-rusting process, we're going to need to soak it into something, which we're going to go pick up here in a little bit. Uh, however, I'm going to go ahead and break these, break these clips up. We got some packages. Check out my son's Father's Day card for me. You do the MSM. Love it. All right, first one is from MCRC. They're the ones that sent me all those different like charge leads and things like that, which I still need to go over. I haven't gone over yet. <laughs> he says, I noticed. He said, I noticed you need an adapter for your DRC charge lead. So I just did a video on my DRC charge leads that I got made, which I did not plan on meeting MCRC at Silver State when I met him. Um, but he says, I noticed you need an adapter for your DRC charge leads. And he goes, we make them. And he sent me an adapter. <laughs> and they said they also make direct leads where you don't have to do an adapter. So the reason why I did a balance adapter on my charge leads is because if you charge Gen Zace batteries, they're different. The charge, the balance lead adapter is different than Protec. So I can charge both Protec and Gen Zace batteries if I use an adapter. So that's the reason why I did it. But thanks a lot, MCRC. I'm still gonna do a video going over all that stuff because there's a lot of stuff in that box. Yeah, and then he highlighted where I needed it. <laughs> Big shout out to MCRC. Appreciate it. All right, this one is from a couple of my friends that I do speed runs with. Dave and Mike, they also go to the Moonlight Crawler events. All right. It says, Dear Mark, we want to officially give you a gift for becoming a member of the 100 Mile Prower Club. We cannot think of a better trophy. I was happy to be a part of it. Your speedrun buddies, Mike and Dave. <laughs> the <laughs> the reflect. They didn't take it off the road. It actually, they actually bought the reflector, but it's the fire hydrant def reflector on the road. So the reason why this is funny is because every time we do speed runs, it's like this reflector is gigantic. It's like we have, it's like we gravitate towards it. And if you hit this reflector when doing speed runs, your car goes flying. But they end up buying me the blue fire hydrant <laughs> deflector. That is too funny. Thanks a lot, Mike and Dave. We're gonna be doing speed runs really, really soon. I'll reach out to you guys. But back to the X Max rebuild video. How rusty those screws are. By the way, I have a lot of people ask me what electric screwdriver I use. I have a link in the description to the one I recommend. However, this one's a little bit different. I'll put more links in the description, so go check that out. Oh my god, these are mega rusty. Oh, oh. God, this thing is mega rusty. Man, what did I get myself into? There's even rust on the motor. So I have it broken down to more manageable pieces now. This is for my own sanity. Doing the entire rebuild on the entire car all at once obviously would be a pain in the butt. Now I can just grab this one piece, de-rust all those screws, work on it on my workbench, and then, you know, do it in three different sections. So. There are my screws there. Everything that I use to take the chassis apart, I put in this cup right here. And we're gonna start on that. Working on RC is so much fun. It's very therapeutic, I love it. But my goal is we wanna get the shocks off. We need to make sure all the mechanical pieces aren't binding up or rusted or anything like that. We're gonna take the shocks off, rebuild the shocks. Obviously we're gonna de-rust all the screws and all the metal, the drive shafts. We're also going to clean the bearings. I'll show you guys how to clean the bearings. I want to take the diff out, fill the diff back up with fluid if it needs to be filled back up, and then check the hinge pins. So when these guys jump these cars hardcore, it bends the hinge pins really easy. So we'll make sure they're nice and straight, shined up, and hopefully it'll be functioning like a perfectly new X-Men. Oh my goodness, this is what RC nightmares are made of. I took everything apart. <laughs> Look at this. A couple of things to note. This is from the diff. This was just wiping the bottom of the case. There was grease all inside the case also, so the front diff 
is definitely leaking but that's super thick and gross also you can see here there's some really fine dirt almost like sand i'm convinced they either ran this on a really 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 fine dirt area or on the beach so that's probably why everything's really really rusted um we got some bearings down here these bearings are completely seized we're going to unseize those but i got to go to the store and get some stuff to actually put this in and the stuff we're going to use to de-rust all the screws and metal pieces oh much better okay i organized it all diffs bearings look at the hinge pins the hinge pins actually don't look bad i think there was one that looked kind of bent you can actually see it right there um however we're going to clean them off before we decide we want to bend them back there's the rusty screws all right let's go to the store grab some stuff All right, so here's what I got. I got some small boxes. We're gonna put like the springs and drive shafts in here. And then this is for, to clean our bearings and other parts. And then I got some more symbol green because I'm out of symbol green. I'm soaking the parts that were like, had a whole bunch of grease. These are like my diff pieces in symbol green to kind of degrease them a little bit. I got some brake cleaner for maybe stubborn dirt or the bearings. And then this is what we're gonna use to de-rust everything. This is apple cider vinegar. So apparently, if you soak your rusted screws and your rusted parts in apple cider vinegar, it de-rusts them. You like let them sit overnight. So I got a couple of these for parts. I got this for bearings. This is just regular acetone. And then I'm going to fill this up with water and soap and wash all my plastic parts in there, like the arms and things like that. So let's get to doing that. All right, so we have these screws sitting in apple cider vinegar now and some other parts. This is just a front clip, by the way. And then I put all the plastic pieces in the soapy water here. We're about to wash those. Don't need, those don't need to sit very long. Um, this, however, probably needs to sit overnight. And then tomorrow we'll take them out and then put a coat of WD-40 on there. And they should be, at least what I saw, they should be de-rusted. I don't know if the camera is getting that, but you can actually see bubbles all over that thing. I think you can see the apple cider vinegar actually working. That's crazy. I hope this works. I think this is going to be so awesome <laughs> if it derails everything. All right, guys, it's the next day. I cannot wait to see what the apple cider vinegar did to the rust. I did a sneak peek. I checked to see what it did. And guys, you guys are going to be impressed. But I need something to get them out of the apple cider vinegar. And I do not recommend you guys try this at home. All right. What we really need is like a metal strainer. Oh, this is perfect. And it's cuisine art. Oh, Melissa's gonna be pissed. But you know what? No risk it, no biscuit. So here are the parts that I washed. I thought I was gonna be able to get rid of like the little rust stains on the plastic. I could not. I did spray it down with some Cal RC Moose Lick to kind of give it a little shine, letting it kind of bake in the sun here for a little bit. Probably not the best thing to let it bake in the sun, but it dries it off really quick, so. All right, so here it is. Look at this. Look at how much grime is already off this thing. I don't know if you can see in there, but there is literally no rust on any of those screws. Now, the caveat is that it actually took off some of the bluing. I mean, it's hardcore. The reason why it's sitting outside is because it stunk up my garage. But look at the, uh, look how black the water is for the drive shafts in the springs. Like, it completely cleaned it off. All right, I got an assistant. Evan's helping me out here. We're going to pour these, kind of shake it up a little bit. Look at that. 
You see any rust on those? That's insane. Insane. Look at that. There is no rust on those screws, guys. I don't know. Is that a fly? There's a fly, a dead fly in there. But no rust on these screws. Holy crap. That's freaking insane. This, there's two flies in there. Oh, no, wait. That's the same guy. I'm going to dust these off, put a little coat of WD-40, get the fly out of there, and then we'll see the other screws. Guys, I am so impressed on how well apple cider vinegar worked on getting rust off. I mean, it's a little bit on my hands, but it literally gets everything off, even a little bit of the bluing, but man, those look absolutely amazing. Oh my goodness, guys, look at how nasty that is. So that just has my springs, uh, the out drives, and the drive shafts. We're just going to pull those out. We're not going to dump those. That's disgusting. Oh, man. Oh, God, they stink, though. The rust is completely gone. But holy smokes, do they stink. Let's get a drive shaft. Here we go. These drive shafts are pretty rusty. Look at that, guys. No rust on them at all. That is insane. Look at that. This shock barely wants to move. I don't know what's wrong with it, but we're gonna find out. All right, so this bearing is completely seized up. We're gonna try to clean this thing out and get it going again. So the first thing you wanna do is remove these rubber shields. Okay. 